new developments over the past 24 hours. A third man, Shondell Barnett, is facing charges of accessory after the fact to first degree accused of assisting Justin Johnson as he evaded law enforcement. Tonight, I'm Shay Arthur. We were the first to alert you on Twitter this morning that officers need help locating 26-year-old Devin Burns and 26-year-old Joshua Taylor. He ran, got beat in my jeans, I'm rocking skin. Long live my little nigga, man. Long live Moolah. He still standing on top of shit. Still got the guy over here. This shit just getting started, though. They better tune in, because it's going to be a movie, you know? is Josh Taylor, also known as CEO TZ. Now we're also getting that this was a hit by PRE DOS gang. So a lot of people, you know, they keep DMing me like, AK, hey, paper route, and anybody affiliated with Dolph going extra hard on social media because the, the TZ is deeper than what y'all think. TZ ain't just no gang member. Teezy was the head nigga of Trula Mafia. Do y'all understand what that means? That means if anybody that's in Trula got anything to do with your dog death, Justin Johnson, Teezy at the end of the day gives the okay. Man once named as a person of interest in young Dolph's has now also been killed. Family members confirmed Joshua Taylor was found shot in Orange Mound yesterday afternoon, leaving that community on edge as they worry who might be next. Hey, yo, squad, what's the drill? Back with another video, man. The Memphis rap scene just hasn't been the same since Dolph met his untimely demise. Sure, there's been a string of artists that have been able to make it to the mainstream, but their presence and music just hasn't hit like Mr. Paper Ralph Frank. Over the past two years, there's been a lot going on in regards to his case. The suspects, allegedly, have been revealed, but details have been sparse. Nonetheless, recently, there's been a lot of movement towards justice. Right now, with the alleged suspects in custody and one on house arrest and another person of interest in the grave, I think it's safe to say things could be heating up pretty soon. CEO TZ was hit up not too long ago out Memphis, and many believe it was in retaliation to the Dolph hit. But just what has been going on since 2021 in regards to this case? Will justice be served? Was CEO TZ a simple case of get back? We're going to find out. So without further ado, let's skip the play play and get down to business. Your boy Dolph was known for looking out for his homies and younger up and coming artists. He refused to sign a major label deal and encourage other rappers to follow his independent paper route. It didn't hurt that he made the ish look good. Bro was really balling and stayed humble and true to the game. He helped launch the career of his key protege, Key Glock, with whom he released two joint albums, Dumb and Dumber and Dumb and Dumber 2. He also gave away cars, money, and scholarships to fans. Nowhere was the rapper more celebrated than his Memphis community, and Dolph loved them back. Sometimes people make it and you don't ever see them again. They don't ever give back. But he uh, blew all that out the water, supporting his high school, supporting the community, giving away turkeys. And Unfortunately, all of that only sparked hatred and contempt amongst certain characters in the city. And Dolph met his demise on November 17, 2021 at the age of 36. He was hit up by unknown assailants while buying cookies at Makita's homemade butter cookie. He was in Memphis for his annual Thanksgiving giveaway at that time. He suffered 22 alleged gunshot wounds in total before he passed away. How crazy is it that he was taken out in his city while trying to give back to his city? A lesson that rappers learn the hard way. But as I said before, it's really a catch-22 when it comes down to being in your city when you're successful. Most rappers would rather be around people they love in an environment they are familiar with than to risk meeting their demise somewhere else. It's a twisted world when you're from the streets and you're doing your thing. I wish it wasn't even like that, but it is what it is for real. Within a year of the crime, several men were charged in connection to Dolph's hit. Justin Johnson, Cornelia Smith, Jamarcus Johnson, and others. They were accused of conspiring to take him out and fleeing the scene in a white Mercedes Benz. The people recovered the car and two guns that matched the shells found at the crime scene. Justin Johnson and Cornelia Smith were identified as the alleged hitters, while Jamarcus Johnson and Hernandez Govan were accused of being accessories before and after the fact. Jamarcus Johnson is supposedly Justin Johnson's brother. Talk about a real family affair, huh, man? If only we saw each other like family, things would probably be a lot different in these streets. But I'm a dreamer. A month after being arrested for the alleged involvement in the fatal shooting, the two men indicted for the hit pled not guilty on February 11, 2022. 
Upon their respective arrests in January of that year, Justin Johnson, age 23, and Cornelia Smith, age 32, faced charges of first-degree hit and theft of property between $10,000 and $60,000. Entering in red jumpsuits, 23-year-old Justin Johnson and 32-year-old Cornelia Smith faced a judge. Smith was also charged with attempted first-degree hit unlawfully carrying or possessing a weapon and employment of a firearm with intent to commit a felony. Warrants for Johnson and Smith's arrest were launched in early January 2022, with both being brought to justice within a week. A third suspect, 27-year-old Shundell Barnett, was arrested later that month and was charged as an accessory to Dolph's hit. It was alleged that Barnett had convened with Johnson shortly after Dolph was hit. According to a U.S. Marshal, the pair were seen traveling together in Terry Hart, Indiana, where Johnson was arrested. Memphis authorities say Justin Johnson was arrested Tuesday afternoon in Indiana. Jamarcus Johnson turned himself in November 2022. He was initially charged with conspiracy to commit first degree hit. Prior to that, Hernandez Golvin was charged in regards to the incident. He was indicted by a grand jury on three charges on November 10, 2022, just days before Johnson. 43-year-old Hernandez was the only suspect charged with conspiracy to commit first degree, meaning investigators could have evidence that Golvin planned to hit Dolph. According to his case information, that charge is from June 2021, which could indicate that he planned to hit Dolph months before it happened. Within the first year of the case, things were messy and confusing as suspects and people of interest were getting named left and right without proper follow-ups by the media. Makes one think if it was intentional. But anyways, two people of interest that were announced to the public were Devin Barnes and Joshua Taylor, a.k.a. CEO Teasy. Tonight, I'm Shay Arthur. We were the first to alert you on Twitter this morning that officers need help locating 26-year-old Devin Burns and 26-year-old Joshua Taylor. The latter would make the news recently for something unfortunate. We'll get to that in a bit. Fast forward to this year and the case was finally starting to gain some traction and moving along. One of the men accused in connection to the rapper Young Dolph's hit, Jamarcus Johnson, played guilty in his court hearing in June of this year. The first piece to fall following the death of rapper Young Dolph came Friday when Jamarcus Johnson pleaded guilty to three counts of accessory after the fact. He has to tell the truth. That's, that's what this deal, this was guilty plea is hinged on his... Uh, he has to tell the truth. He admitted to assisting his brother Justin Johnson in the days after the rapper met his demise by taking possession of Justin Johnson's cell phone and car, so authorities would not think that Justin was in Memphis. Prosecutors say Cornelius Smith and Justin Johnson were the gunmen. Prosecuting attorney Paul Hackerman says Jamarcus may be called as a witness to testify against the other suspects during the trial if it goes there. He is currently facing between 6 and 12 years in prison. With Johnson now facing a possibility of 6 to 12 years after confessing to his role in helping his half-brother Justin escape from Memphis and fooling probation officers, the focus has shifted to the other three defendants. The other three suspects are expected in court very soon, maybe even by the time this video drops. Jamarcus's plea comes after it was revealed that his brother, Justin, was caught with illegal substances and a cell phone earlier this month while held in Shelby County Jail. John Morris, a spokesperson for the Shelby County Sheriff's Office, confirmed that Justin was caught with an illegal contraband in his cell, but couldn't disclose any more details. The matter is currently being investigated as we speak. Justin previously had his cell phone privileges revoked last year after he released a song from jail called No Statements on which he addressed the hit of Dolph. Well, Greg, the song titled No Statements premiered last Thursday on YouTube. The same day it was revealed a third suspect was indicted. The video is recorded on a cell phone. These updates come shortly after Hernandez Govan, the alleged mastermind behind Dolph's hit, was released on $90,000 bail. Now out of jail on a $90,000 bond. Our Jarita Patterson was in court today and learned that new bond is based partially on new details of his possible role in the crime. The judge presiding over his case, however, made it clear that Govan's bond was contingent upon his compliance with house arrest. The suspect is only allowed to leave his house for medical emergencies or to meet with his attorney. Still a sweet deal, considering. What's wild is that Young Dolph's family reportedly gave approval for Govan to be released on bond to the Shelby County District Attorney, Steve Mulroy. That's hard to believe even as I was reading it. Like, wow, who knows the motivation behind that? Perhaps the streets know. I'll leave that alone. 
The latest bit of news related to the case is regarding CEO Teezy, a notorious person of interest. It looks like bruh got caught slipping and met his demise by way of the strap. He was reportedly assassinated on June 13th. They were too upset to do an interview. But tell us Taylor, also known as CEO TZ, was found shot to death in Orange Mound Wednesday at Spotswood and Bunton. Those who live nearby tell us Taylor was actually shot the night before, discovered lifeless in a car hours later. Local police received a man down call shortly before 1 p.m. local time from Spotswood Avenue near Bunton Street on Wednesday. There, they found Teezy's lifeless body hours after the incident took place. According to a tweet from ABC24 Memphis reporter Ian Ripple, multiple sources have confirmed that the victim's identity was in fact that of CEO Teezy. The shooting happened that night. MPD was searching for a victim, but never found one in the area. His body was discovered shortly after noon today. When it comes to CEO Teezy's demise, the streets have been talking big time. Many believe this was in retaliation for the Dolph hit, seeing that Teezy was the alleged head of Trula Mafia. As a big dog in charge, ideally nothing can go down without his okay. Teezy ain't just no gang member. Teezy was the head digger of Trula Mafia. Do y'all understand what that means? That means if anybody that's in Trula got anything to do with your dog death, Justin Johnson, Teezy at the end of the day gives the okay. Him being taken out could be looked at as a huge chess move from the opposition. With the boss out, the foundation is sure to crumble. The timing is also very interesting given that a potential trial can be underway very soon. People are pleading guilty and so on. This adds multiple dimensions behind the possible motives of his assassination. People on the internet believe he was a person of interest due to his affiliation with those who were charged in the Dolph hit. People like Straight Drop aka Justin Johnson have been seen numerous times on camera with Mr. Teasy making the association clear and evident. Around the time that the news dropped about CEO's demise, people believed that the recent posts from PRE members were all revolving around that fatal outcome. On a completely different side of the speculation spectrum, there are even some rumblings online that bro was taken out by his own to prevent a possible testimony. But I haven't really seen too much on that. Interesting to think about though. Truth is, nobody really knows who did what to Teezy, other than the ones directly involved. At the end of the day, this could have nothing to do with Dolph. When you got as much street clout as Teezy did, more than one target can be on you at once. That's the price of power, for real. At this moment, justice seems to be moving slow for Dolph and his family. Something seems to be weird about how things are happening, but that could be the nature of the case. The trial hasn't even been announced yet, but it is believed by news outlets that some sort of sentencing will take place on August 12th of this year. That's not long at all, so we ain't got long to wait and see what's up. In the meantime, stay smart, stay alert, and stay real. I'm out, y'all.